go to the next slide. I try to copy these amounts up here, but they are tiny, tiniest ever. So where do you start? The big overview for what's going on up here. Well, first of all, I try to gray out these two columns, and um, they are actually not our books. It says right here, pension trust books. All on this side, all the numbers up here are our books. So we do use the numbers from the pension trust, but it's not like you can walk over there and say, let me make a journal entry for you. No, in fact, they will mail you the numbers and you will check what you have on your books. So the first one, we have projected benefit application given to us and we go ahead and fill it in right here on the credit side. Why? Because it's a liability. It's a liability. Next one, your plan assets at fair value are 410 right here on the debit side. Why? It's a debit. So that was received from the pension trust. They also try to throw you off. I believe somewhere they gave you accumulated uh, benefit obligation. Maybe it's not even here. I can't see very well. Oh, it's right here. Accumulated benefit obligation. We never use these numbers. We do disclose them in the notes, but we never use them in the calculations. A lot of students get confused. It's not large enough because uh, accumulated benefit obligation is only on the current salaries. And we got to have vested and non-vested employees at future salaries once they retire. Again, it's not large enough for FASB. We got to go with a more inclusive liability in this case. So for our example, you can plug in uh, whether we have a pension asset or liability on our books. I know it is a liability. Why? Because PBO is larger than your plan assets. Okay. You have to be careful. Here's a little trick. Sometimes in the problems, they will give you a pension asset or liability, and they will have to tell you which one it is. And they will ask, for example, what's your projected benefit obligation? So you'll have to solve for that. Or what's your plan assets? You'll have to solve for that. It's easy to do once you know what's going on. Um, okay, let's look at the next example. In our case, we also are given $160,000 as your um, prior service cost in other comprehensive income, this balance. Okay, we filled in all the balances for the beginning of the year. Let's take a look at the top. What are my columns? My columns are all the accounts that I have. So pension expense is your normal expense think income statement. Cash, I'm not too worried about it. Your comprehensive income right here, you have a statement of comprehensive income, which is not the same as income statement. So these are permanent accounts. We don't close them at year end. We don't just zero them out. They get forwarded through the equity. So you have two prior service costs and your gains and losses. Okay, so really pension plans have two large components for the comprehensive income. Nice to remember for the CPA exam. What else we have? Pension, asset, and liability. This one, again, is a permanent account, and it works as your normal liability or asset, credit or debit. For the comprehensive income, I almost forgot up here. If you have a debit balance, it's a loss. If you have a credit balance, it's a gain, kind of like revenues. So remember that for the future. So right here, what do we have? We have a loss because it's a debit balance. So down going through the this column up here, we have changes that occur and we will be seeing what kind of effect will they have on our accounts. These light rows work as journal entries. We don't journalize them one by one. We accumulate them and then we simply will make one journal entry, combining journal entry right up here in my darker 
line. So let's take a look at the first one. Your service cost. If you remember from the pension skeleton, that's one of the largest expenses, parts, I mean, in your pension expense. So let's add it. Why do we debit it? Debit to expense, you will increase it. And the credit will go to your projected benefit obligation. It's also increased. Next one, your settlement or interest rate. What is that? It's that liability. It's on PBO. Why? We carry in the PBO. We need to move it to the end of the year. And that's going to cost you. How much? Take the beginning balance and multiply it by the settlement rate. In our cost, the settlement or interest rate is 10%. I really don't like that they use 10% a lot. I kind of like to re reserve 10% for my corridor approach. But this amount, again, the 10%, is given in the problems, and your actuaries actually give that amount to you. So this amount will also increase your expenses, and it will increase your PBO. Next one. Next one is a little tricky. You have your return on assets. Your actual return on assets were $38,000. Okay, so I will plug it in, actual return on assets, $36,000, and it's a credit. Why? Your stocks and bonds, your investments work very hard for you. They produce a return. It's a good thing. It will drive your expenses down. And uh, the other side will be the plan assets, debited. Why debited? They went up. Could you have a negative return? Yes. Unfortunately, you could. All right. Um, the next one that we have to work through, because it is a pretty comprehensive problem, they also give you re expected return on assets right here. And it happens to be, again, 10%. It could be 8, 9, 15, whatever. The company will estimate what they predict the expected return on plan assets will be. Why? Fast be allowed a nice smoothing because they realize that market could be going up and down very, very volatilely. So they say, why don't you charge, why don't you charge expected return in your pension expense? So take a look. These two, these two, lighter green, magically add up to your expected return on plan assets. Do you want to prove? Okay. Your plan assets are 410. You multiply them by your expected rate of return, 10%. So you were hoping to get on the market 41,000. You only got 36, this one. Okay. Are you better off or worse off? Well, unfortunately, in this case, you are actually worse off. You're worse off. So you were hoping to get 41, you only got 36. So you ended up with a loss, unexpected loss. It's a debit balance. Okay, how do I know again? You were hoping for 41. You only got 36 on the market. So it's an unexpected, you didn't fulfill your expectation, loss, which is a debit then, for $5,000. If this is a debit, you're going to go up here and put a credit to pension expense. And it will be unexpected loss on your plan assets. Okay, got that one straight. Next one. Next one will be your amortization of prior service cost. So what are we trying to do? We have this gigantic balance that we booked a long time ago, and we gradually amortize them or all allocate it on future service cost, future service years. Well, this is the current year, and that amount is given usually to you. Um, it happens to be $70,000 in our case. How do I know that this is credited? Well, if I have a debit balance to begin with, gigantic debit balance, and I want to gradually amortize it, that calls for a credit to bring it down. So I will credit for $70,000. A debit will go into pension expense. And again, it's a debit 
going into the expense account will increase it. Next one. Sometimes you guys get confused with this one. Contribution to the plan. So the company will cut a check. Okay, so cash left us. However, we will not directly send it to our retirees. We will remit that as a contribution into our pension trust. So they will receive the money, $97,000, and then they will invest it. Next line, the pension trust will cut checks to our retirees. So these are the checks that they cut. So they took some of our plan assets out, therefore it's a credit, and gave them to the retirees, therefore the liability went down, it's a debit balance. And we have one more line item. It's not always there, but in this problem it is. Our actuaries contacted us and they said, guess what, you people are living longer. We projected that they will be living up to 79 years, and they're living to 81. So we recalculated your projected benefit obligation, and it should go up by $87,000. So that's what we did. We increased our PBO by $87,000, but we will not just directly dump it into one-year pension expense. We will put it right here. It's that loss on the liability we talked about. It's a loss, it's a debit in the liability. So we filled in all the lines going down. Now is the time to create our journal entry. And in order to keep the videos shorter, I would actually record a short video just for the journal entry itself.